Hello and welcome to the USS Long Beach comment response video. Oof. This is going to be a fairly heavy duty one and it's going to be kind of long because there's a lot of lot of good comments and interesting comments to go through. So let's start off with Night 6831's first comment. Aren't the Tikaronga class the last American cruisers? Now there's a whole debate that goes on here. Um, you want to live uh, live forever? Responds well. Built on extended destroyer hull. They're not even built on really an extended destroyer hull. They are built on a spruance hull, um, slightly modified. Uh, Dragomir Tikongas were called cruisers because they're electronics and the need for a prestige title certain part, as mentioned, uh, are made on destroyer hulls. We could have called them destroyer leaders, but it's the Cold War assumed a political image reason. They were originally going to be called destroyer leaders. That is originally what they were planned to be called. Um, Mike Cavallo, Tycharonga class are listed as Jane, uh, cruisers in Jane's and Naval Industry Combat Fleet. They are the definitive sources. Then goes on with, they are about 7,000 tons. I wonder how you define a destroyer hull form. Well, most destroyers are actually heavier than that these days, and some more class, etc., are, uh, are several thousand tons. And we've got all sorts of scenarios, but Destroy um, most cruisers by the end of World War Two that were being built were ten thousand tons and above, but there were our vessels which were less. And I think just using as tonnage, um, it, destroying how you define a destroyer hull form. Basically, a destroyer hull form tends to be um, have a narrower beam and be designed for higher speed operation versus a cruiser hull form, which is designed for long range cruising. And presence missions. It still tends to be pretty fast, uh, with a fairly good ratio for length to beam, but the destroyer's length to beam ratio tends to be a higher length to beam ratio, so it tends to be faster. So destroyer hull form is not based on tonnage size, it's destroyer hull form is a is a shaping parameter. And Then Shooter 2025 has it has to do with the second order damage control deck. Long, Re Long Beach House last to have all uh, have such. All follow on ships are destroyer variants, including Zomorts. Zomorts are actually called destroyers. Then Mike Cavalier. Nonetheless, the university recognized the authority of sources Jane's and Naval Institute list the Tekron class as cruisers. Okay. So I always love it when people put up Jane's, which is a publishing company. And they are a brand, etc., as the authoritative source, or even the Naval Institute. Because whilst I agree those are very authoritative sources, you also must remember they have to get a lot of their access from governments. They work with governments. And so if a government chooses to define something as a cruiser, especially if it's a major government, they will define it as such. That is why, at certain points in the Cold War, they persisted with things being called heavy aircraft carrying cruisers of the Soviet Navy, even though we we're all calling them aircraft carriers. It's also why the Ticos get called cruisers. Because the Ticos aren't really cruisers. Basically, at a certain point, they realized that there was going to be a massive cruiser gap, and in terms of prestige, when it was looked at that lovely Excel spreadsheet or the table which were produced for publication, the US Navy was short on cruisers compared to their Russian counterparts. The Russians had more cruisers. The American cruisers were mostly nuclear-powered vessels of some kind. And especially some of them are really, really powerful vessels. Long Beach is a good example of that. But even then, they hadn't always been called cruisers. Some of them, at one point, they were calling what, well, in fact, they're cruisers frigates and all sorts of things. The US Navy goes through some very weird naming conventions, and of course, Jane's very long, lovingly keeps up with those because that's what you do when you are providing a world's authoritative information source. Part of that is this is what the people who run them call them. So Ticos are classed as cruisers. 
to be fair, in terms of impact, that more has an effect on the seniority of the officer placed in charge of them than anything else. They are, when you see their performance in rough seas, etc., you would definitely say destroy a hull form. When you see their performance in operations, destroy a hull form. They are large destroyers, destroyer leaders, but they're not cruisers. In many ways, you could almost say they're, dest they're tribal class destroyers. They are, but it's like if the Royal Navy turned around and called the tribal class, oh yeah, they're cruisers. Well, yeah, they were cruisers, which were two, three thousand tons not that long ago. These vessels are, these vessels are cruisers. Yeah, they're just destroy. They're, yes, they're stretch destroyers, but they're cruisers. This is what. An Aegis cruiser would have looked like. Well, the previous one. Let me go back to it quickly. You know, this is what it would look like. And this is what the strike cruisers, which were going to be based on it, would have looked like. And on uh, then you'd have had the Ticos as basically the destroyer leaders alongside them. And then to save money, they get rid of the strike cruisers and they call the Ticos cruisers. And so they have the cruiser numbers. That's it. It's This is why I, I do not call Ticos the last cruisers. I'd still call them cruisers because that's what the US Navy calls them. But I wouldn't consider them the last. I wouldn't consider them part of the cruiser genus of the, of the uh, United States Naval Heritage. I would say the that Long Beach is the last of the cruiser heritage vessels. That bring forward that lovely line of hull form and design and efficiency they have produced and all that work they've done from the 1920s onwards that has evolved into this beautiful United States Navy cruiser form ends with Long Beach going. It does. Nice turn. Hey Doc, am I correct to think if the British don't decline as they did, they would have built CGNs? In the hearts of iron based against all odds all time in history, the British have the indefatigable class nuclear powered guided missile cruiser. Except for some reason they kill it in favour of conventional powered county class guided missile cruiser. The British were designing a nuclear powered guided missile cruiser. Which the American CGN would be good for what the British would have gone for? Mm. Probably the Virginia. It depends on the period. But I would say the Virginias would probably be the ones closest. I would say, yeah, they'd be the ones closest to where the Royal Navy would go for. ATF YouTube doing part of a hole is still at PN at PSNS. They still haven't scratched it for whatever reason. Hmm. Part they scanned her. Part still radioactive, perhaps. AFTF YouTube division. She was defueled 25 years ago. Don't think that's the issue. Probably just inertia. Code 85. If it was me, it'd be based on either the Alaskas or Missouris. But knowing the US current, it was probably an upside. Uh, uh, it'd probably have been an upsized Arlie Burke. Probably. Mm -hmm. uh, general comments about the uh, comments for, uh, from a few commenters about the looks of Long Beach. I wouldn't say that's ugly. B-1900 pilot. She was homeboarded at NAS North Island at one point. I stood on the pier next to her. She was big. She was. And she was gorgeous. And a very useful statement for the United States to send around the world. The thing about cruisers, about a properly built cruiser, is it's something you can send when the local frigates have not really had the desired effect. And it makes you a point. You know, it, it's, it is a big status symbol to turn up and go, So... We have a small issue. You didn't listen. Now, you and I both know the next level up from me is a Carabao group turning up off your shoulders, and you're going to listen on there. 
So it's better to talk while you're talking to me, because it can look like you are doing this diplomatically, whereas when the Carabella group shows up, ain't no one gonna believe you're doing it because you suddenly want to. Roll maximum. I don't believe that this is on. All, uh, this is almost class destroyer's optimal for a missile cruiser, uh, which is there to defend a carrier. The prime bend has a somewhat hull design with stealth and better acoustics, and both of these are useful, but not as lot of space necessary for the seafaring missiles. I think we would have been forced to look at a proper CGX with the same length of beam uh, length of beam ratio as the Arleigh Burke for both space and stability. This would allow us to have a large number of Mark 41 VLS cells, as well as the ability to have larger vertical launch shells for hypersonic missiles, and that sort of events. And given enough space, we might have looked at Acer, S-band, X-band, and L-band array radars. I... This is not a destroyer. It is a cruiser. I would... The Long Beach. Um, I am... Um, the Zumwalt Hull as a potential for a cruiser hull is actually quite effective in some regards for hypersonics etc because it's quite a deep hull it gives you quite a lot of space stealth and better acoustics are not things which necessarily need to be considered about a vessel which is going to be a task group ship but ultimately you build the hull for both duties because your main arguments against that hull and against the system are this will be a defense ship for the carrier battle group. And that's true, but any crew, that's basically a destroyer these days. So you're, okay, larger destroyer covers that role. If you're building a cruiser, you're building a ship which can operate independently. And that requires a few more tricks up their sleeve, basically. Michelites, on the choice of the 5-inch 38. Oh, one of the later designs, 5-inch mounts. My late uncle was a gunner's mate technician, served from 1951 to 71. Was servicing Korea and Vietnam, retired rank of senior chief, E8, based on his own experience with the different 5-inch mounts. And of that period, late 50s, early 1960s, his opinion was the 5-inch 38 was the superior version for that era. Cool. I had a few discussions with him on the subject over the years, and he had rather a laundry list of items he considered to be problems with the 51 and 54 caliber mounts of that era. As far as both maintenance and operations from his standpoint as a gunner, mate, that would have, uh, be having to maintain and operate the things. Several times he opined that if you gave him a 5-inch 38 mount and a good gun crew, that he could easily outperform any of the 51 and 54 caliber mounts of that time period. Given that it seems that two 5-inch mounts were afterthought to deal with close-range threats and to satisfy the concerns of a rather prominent politician, and at that time the USN still had a plethora of ships in service with that particular mount and a plentiful supply of ammunition for them, along with many old hands well versed in their operation and maintenance, the USN went with the cheapest, easiest and most reliable option they had, probably also with a mind to, op to the option that had the least impact as to redesign and alteration that section of the ship. I also wouldn't rule out Admiral Rick Rover having some say in the matter, giving his fondness for insisting on making the maximum use of combat-proven equipment, i.e. World War II era. On any ship with a nuclear reactor, that naval reactors could claim some amount of jurisdiction over. From personal experience, the uh, USN submarine force labelled on that description at least as far as the propulsion plant until his full retirement. Fun gentleman, Rick Rover. Long Beach, uh, Force A1, Long Beach was designed and built in the late 1950s and early 1960s, before Rick Rover gained the f ability to fully veto or block projects he didn't like. His only influence was over the power plant, and broadly speaking, didn't have that much influence over design of surface ships other than effectively killing off DDG FY67. Hence, he would not have been behind a selection of 5-inch 38 mounts, which were likely selected because they were available, had minimal Im ship impact, and did not require the below-deck ammunition handling spaces of the 5-inch 54 Mark 41. The problems with the 5 inch Mark uh, 54 Mark 41 would not have been apparent at this time. They primarily manifest themselves during the sustained shore bombardments of the Vietnam era, or, and given that Long Beach was designed and built before, built from 1956 to 1951, these events had yet to happen. Carl Pennypecker. On one Vietnam vet I talked to fairly regularly said that with a 5 inch 54 on something like the Forest Sherman, it's more likely to have a burst barrel when a shell gets wedged in the barrel during prolonged shore bombardment missions since they were automatic, and with a 38, you had a guy looking down the barrel before he slammed the round home, ready for firing. This could be just these stories, but 
he made the claim that on a shore leave, uh, shore leave on basis, most of the exploded barrels on the pier side were 5 inch 54s and not the older 38s. That wouldn't surprise me because, again, the early automatics had issues. The early automatics do have issues. I think 5 inch 38 installed for whatever reason. Um, probably extra defense, but I wouldn't really call the 5 inch 38 about close range defense. It does give you options, but it's not really close range defense. That would be more 40 millimeters being added in. But it gives you options if things go down. It does give you more security, and I think that's the thing. The 5 inch 38 was about was about security. Security of the ship. Matthew Malachy. Uh Imagine if they would have used a hull long lines of the Lexington Battlecruiser design instead of a light cruiser hull. Should have been massive. Mahulsive almost. She'd have still been gorgeous, but she'd have been mahusive. I myself would like them to build more of her. I think if they built three or four of them, that could have been interesting. Now, so the US Navy did actually plan to build a class of 8 to 12 nuclear powered cruisers called the Strike Cruisers. Uh, it's basically a Virginia class nuclear cruiser with Aegis. The plan originally was to have Long Beach converted to Aegis as a prototype and then build the Strike Cruisers and Tico as the destroyers. I can definitely see these serving as today if they'd actually been built and upgraded. Now, here's the interesting thing about that comment, which you had now, analysis. I think, without going too much into the video, I did discuss that. So it's always, a, it's always good to know how quickly and how eager people are to comment. And how much I get their thoughts going, and then they sort of comment, and then it's afterwards they sort of go, Yep, he put that in at the end. And then you get an edited comment. And that's what I usually spot for. I thought, ah. And then it got edited. Mm hmm. There are some people who I love because I will get five or six notification notifications about the same comment. I have to be careful at certain points. I have to turn off YouTube notifications on occasions when I'm going things like appointments because. If I'm doing an appointment while a video is live, go when a video goes live, in the first hour of that video going live, my phone will buzz. Oh, so much. The next two hours, it'll be fairly quite, it'll be quite consistent. And then occasionally, I'll get messages afterwards, but, you know, usually most of them, it's the first hour. And so if I have an appointment during that first hour, I will often... How do I put this? Uh, turn my phone on silent and so I can't see it, so I can't own. then what I have to do is I have to be kind of rude to people because if I want to check to see if my family are messaging me or anything like that I have to have it on the table and up so I can see what flashes up whether it's YouTube or people because otherwise I can't tell the difference I have tried to you change the YouTube notification vibration to something individual but YouTube every time it updates it changes it back That could be something to do with the ages of YouTube and Samsung and uh, how they work together, but I'll leave that to one side. Anyway, the full say one. The Aegis Mark 20 Mod Zero deck houses were 200 tons each and were too heavy to put on a Virginia hull, although that was originally planned for them. The first Aegis ship design was DGN, or DLGN Aegis, which was drawn up early in the 70s alongside a cheaper and smaller conventionally powered DDG Aegis. It's eventually evolved into the Strike Cruiser. While the design changed so much and grew to the point that there was completely clean sheet design, they still used to destroy nuclear machinery, two DGG reactors, but they were otherwise designed to meet cruise survivability standards when it came to redundancy and protection. Strike cruisers were cancelled in 1977, and a more austere nuclear-powered Aegis ship called CGN-42 was designed, based upon the early DLGN Aegis studies, but with an improved layout of the CSGN. The helicopter hangar and the superstructure rather than the hull, uh, rather than in the hull, the uh, forward gun, for, uh, forward of the missile launcher rather than abaft it, as in DLGN CGN-38, Although CGN-42 did not have the protection or flag facilities of the CSGN. And that's other things. US cruisers have flag facilities. They have things in them to do their role of task group leadership. And that's something again which <clears throat> certain vessels which are classified as cruisers do not have. Mr. Stewart, I mean, I, can I argue for everything being nuclear powered? Then you're getting your fuel from Sakasuran and nobody can threaten that, uh, uh, and nobody can threaten that supply source. Mmm, it's all, it's very, 
once you have everything nuclear powered, there are more issues. There are issues. So, big icon, thank you for covering nuclear his cruiser history. I'm just happy to do it. I enjoy nuclear cruisers. That's one of the things that I like about my channel because my PhD is war studies, because I'm an able historian, but I also do current affairs. I am quite happy to come up fairly close. I did. I hope you noticed that in the videos of the more recent designs, things got more circumspect in terms of some of the stuff I'm discussing. Because my view is, if it's still covered under rules and still active service, then I am going to be very, very, this is what's publicly known information about it. I remember once I had a conversation where I said, basically, I check what details I give about an equipment with what is written about it on Wikipedia. Because my view is, if that's the data given on Wikipedia, no one can argue I'm revealing anything, because I can just go, well, it's the stuff that's on Wikipedia. And it won't get any of my friends who chat with me into, into trouble. And people won't go, oh, you're revealing information to that historian. No. They're not. It's, for, it's the same data as is on Wikipedia, as in the books as well. Gustav Ellison, uh, this is the shit that made uh, that made me take the uh, PR twenty three five sixty seriously. Not in the sense of the Russians are actually going to build it, but more like, I mean, it would have been a chance that it wouldn't tip over the moment it touched the water. Mm, always a chance. Yankee clever. I attended the christening of the la of the last ship built at Four River Shipyard and had a model a model of the little Long Beach when I was built a little kid. I thought she was really cool looking when I was nine. That's all. Nothing relevant to say. Thank you for the lecture. Glad you enjoyed it, and glad you thought, and, and I agree, she was cool. Mitchell, it's the first time I remember reading about the US Navy plans for a strike cruiser. Was it in the mid-70s when I was still in high school? Yes, I know I'm old. Don't worry. Mid-80s, so, you know. Well, no, hang on now. Mid-90s. Born late-80s. I, I, I can get that. You know, you're at high school... So I was high school. High school would be secondary school in my language. And let's see. I went to senior school when I was then. So late 1990s. I think I popped up into secondary school in 1998. But my first day of school was my third birthday. So I was weird. And other parents would have gone, yeah, it's your third birthday. We'll give you the day off. And you can start school next day. My mum went, no, we value education. Go in. And that started off an unending scenario where I have worked on my birthday or had school my birthday pretty much every birthday since. There have been, I think, two, possibly three, in my entire life so far where I have not had to work. I mean, I'll take the day off. I only two or three times is not being on a weekday, or when I've been working away. <sighs> I'll, I'll do a good job. I love my work. It might not pay me enough. But I love it. Should probably not say that out too out loud. For and in any university's hearing, I don't get paid in love. I need the money. And paying on time is always good. Uh, Mitchell, the first time uh, time I remember reading about the US Navy plans to strike cruiser was in the mid seventies. A matter of fact, I believe it was in the school library in some magazine, which I can't remember the name of. Can't remember any real details of that particular proposed design, other than it would have been armed with one or more of the lightweight 8 inch gun mounts USM was testing at the time. Edit, I did a Google search for 1970 USM Strike Cruiser design, and quite a bit of the info popped up, including a separate Wikipedia page. Apparently, 1970's original version was to be uh, on order of 17,500 tons fully loaded. Oh. Let's put it this way they would have made um, the Kirov class pay attention. There would have been enough of them. They might not have been as big as the Kirov, but they would have been capable to look at the Kirov and go, Yeah, you're bigger, but there are three of us and one of you. And we're not so small you can boss us around. 
Okay, just ready. Been waiting for this one. As goofy as the sensory look, I think it still has to be uh, has that well balanced health form design from the booklet that gives it a certain elegance. Definitely. Chair of Veterans, Congress would have approved a large LCS hull the size of an LPD with the same reduction gear issues. Plenty of opportunities for dissimilar metal uh, interactions and still no zinc anodes. Yeah, don't get me started on the anodes on the LCS. That's that's a that's, a, that's definitely a bilge response issue. Uh, Shoot twenty three. Gratitude for covering the subject matter. Six years on, Long Beach is certainly antique. Mm hmm. I wish he'd been reserved to be one. Uh, Martin Merland. Land Cat was called Tiger Cat, probably most famous for being used by Argentines during the Falklands. Land Wolf was a thing, particularly the vertical launch, but no one bought them. Land Art was called Guardian. Yep, I'm old enough to remember BAE trying to market the last two. I think Guardian, what? Didn't they produce things like these big con these posters with concrete bunkers positioned along the UK shoreline where the VLS would pot the missile would pop up and fire out and they'd have a radar position somewhere and that was supposed to defend the UK. Oh so many governments wishing we actually had that in service now. Every time that they hear about Russian SSGNs and various other things going on while they go, why do we have no air land based air defense in the UK? Why, when we have a coronation uh, do we have to move a Type 45 destroyer into the Thames to provide air defence over London? Well, there are reasons for this. The 5-inch uh, 54 Mark 42 mount is 60 tonnes. The intermediate Mark 49 is listed as 33 tonnes. The 5-inch 38 mounts are less than 20 tonnes. Considering the mounts above the main deck, using the 38 could have been about top weight. Seeing that she had a fair bit of aluminium to keep weight down. Hmm, potentially. Alex Dunphy, the picture of the Aegis Long Beach was drawn with the experimental light inch, uh, light weight, in, uh, weight 8 inch. Just think about that if that was in service. Think what would happen to the world if the US Navy had a cruiser with an 8 inch guns and uh, 8 inch guns and nuclear powered in service till today. Think about how the rest of the world would have changed. Think about all those nations which seek to, uh, which claim to have first rank navies and first rank equivalent navies, well, how they would have had to respond. I mean, France would literally have to have at least one. Kind of like their carrier, they would have to have one. The Royal Navy would probably have two, like they have two carriers now. Um, they might have built more. They might have built more, but it probably would be a case of, yes, we have two of these, we have two LPDs, we have two carriers. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No one call our bluff, please. They're two decent sized carriers, but they're not going to do the amphib and the carrier strike job at the same time if you want to repeat some of the actions we were involved in not that long ago. Nathan Oaken. Hello, Nathan. Yes, I have got to. Nathan, I, I, I'm going to say this. If this if this uh, this comes out before I've managed to respond to your email, I apologize. I will get. I will email you back. Considering the time that this ship came to service and decision by the US Navy that could have not maintained a new high-tech sensor and weapon suites to replace the old gunships, I think that Long Beach was the nail in the coffin of the old style maintenance concepts. In 1963, the US Navy at the Ventura, the California CB uh, base, established a US Naval Ship Missile System Engineering Station, NSMSC, uh, or Nemesis, to figure out how to come with a training and maintenance tools and documentation that would allow a ship's crew to maintain the systems without having to call on contractors to help them, which was considered totally unacceptable. By the time I started working there in 1973 on the Terrier Mark 76 GM, uh, GMFCS as a systems engineer, later also becoming a computer engineer when digital computers started to replace the old electromechanical calculators for these missile systems, they had solved much of the problem by adopting the NASA maintenance system efforts, including direct communication with the civilian support services led by NS NSMSES, uh, Nemesis? It's far easier to say Nemesis, isn't it? By passing any requirements to go through any officers or other ship personnel not directly involved in maintenance action being done. And NM, NM, NSMSCS have to respond to any calls for assistance within 24 hours, either by direct communication with the personnel needing help, or as I do twice, by being sent, as, uh, sent an expert to the ship ASAP to help them find and fix the problem. This worked. It does sound good. And does sound sensible. Brett Pasquale. Hello. Or oh, Pasquinelli. Pasquinelli. Uh, sorry, you, you said there is a British comedian called Pasquale, and I saw it and looked like it, and so I said Pasquale, but it's actually Pasquinelli. My uncle was a mechanical engineer uh, with Westinghouse nuclear refueling service ships, and did a lot of work on core design Long Beach's CW or C1W reactors. Hmm, cool. Uh, 
Uh, Jeff Bailey, please, sir, could you record a little louder? Maybe move the mic closer? You're worth listening to. Thank you. I hope the sound has improved recently. I've been doing some funny things with editing software to hopefully fix issues. Because I don't know why XSplit does like to record me quietly. When it does tell me, it's recording me loudly. It says it's giving me a volume range of 200%. And it's recording me at maximum volume. And then it says, I'm qu and then I come off from a quiet. Uh, King, King's Rook, side correction. The Iroquois class of the RCN, aka the second tribal class, served alongside the Halifax for, for many years. Huron decommissioned in 2005, Iroquois and Alcon decommissioned in 2015, Afghan decommissioned in 2017. If they'd served just a few years longer, the world could have had tribals staring down the Russians again. With that out of the way, I can see the resemblance, though. Aegis Long Beach needs more stuff on it. As a further side, one of the rumours of the uh, rumours for the CSC is that they could be a third tribal class. And nah, I doubt they will be. I'd like them to be, but I doubt they will be. Nice to go everyone. Any American CGNs could be coming up for replacement now. Well, any American CGNs would be coming up for replacement by now. That they would be. That they would be. Oh, I appear to be joining by uh, joined by a fluffy uh, gentleman. Uh, why have you come to say hello? You come in to say hello. How? How did you get in for starters? Because I didn't think I taught you how to open doors which were locked yet. Thought we've been over not opening locked doors. No, no. Okay, there you go. Eat one biscuit, then you get the other biscuit. Don't try and eat one while grabbing the second. It's it's bad for your health. Uh, Ray McConnell, the photos of Long Beach all make her look too to uh, too top heavy to be to uh, with the uh, with that great um, block structure. How do designers allow for this and keep the ship stable at sea? I have often wondered how they keep such ships as the carriers Lexington and Saratoga sail with those 8 inch gun turrets so high in the waterline. The same goes for the war built Essexes with those 5 inch turrets and all the water, uh, all the radars act on the, and around the island. I once read, but I can't remember where that, uh, the block superstructure on Long Beach serves as the prototype for the island on the Enterprise. Do you think that there is any truth to this, or just a tale of some writer dreamed up because they look similar? On how, or how about the RP7 or CRC or the um, squeaky chair? Um, Thank you. I will look into that. I uh, love the video on Wichita. Our views coincide almost exactly. Thanks, uh, Ray. P.S. Uh, beautiful time of year here in Brisbane, Queensland, Australia. 30 degrees centigrade today. The real heat is coming January, February. Well, Ray, hopefully we will avoid that because we're going to be over there in June. When this is out, actually, uh, when this comes out, let's, let's check the date. Because this, this is going to come out on the 14th of June. And on the 14th of June, according to the public calendar, I will be actually in Brisbane. So this will come out on the 14th of June, and it's day two for us in Brisbane. So, yeah, we're there for the 13th and 14th, so we're, we're not leaving for Sydney till tomorrow. So when this comes out at 7 o'clock in the UK time, I'm not sure what time it's going to be for Australia... I will probably still, well, I'll be in Brisbane for that day, so I have to sort of look up and figure out timings, but, you know, yeah. So, hmm, rather appropriate. Didn't really, that's a happy coincidence, by the way, that's completely not planned. Anyway, uh, the answer to the superstructure is it had similar design teams, so yes, it looks similar, but that's not basically one being a prototype for the other, it's more it being part of the design team going with similar solutions to some problems. And now, as for the stability, that's all down to where you put things like uh, very heavy solid things like engines, etc., which are far denser pieces of metal than superstructure uh, and far heavier in the hull, and also ballast. So where you put in sometimes whole solid ballast which will actually be in some ships actual lead weight <laughs> added into the hull in places uh in other ships it's blocks of steel or various other, or things like that but you can also have pumped in ballast a water etc to try and stabilize the ship and you know there are options there are options what are we up to i know we have a plan we always have a plan right Dan I. Getting back to nuclear power at the carrier schools makes sense. Plus extra power for the powerful radar and jamming, plus the new direct energy weapons. Don't see in our current naval build, unfortunately. Yeah, that is sad. VCH. Vintage car history. Always a very good channel to watch, by the way, if you know anyone's interested. That thing looked like a bad idea from IKEA. Mm. 
No, I don't see too much Swedish design influence in there. For starters, there's not really enough shelving. Hello. Yes, you're cute. Christopher, in the modern era, nuclear power is required for a ship to be a cruiser. You cannot perform the full spectrum of cruiser missions, especially in wartime, without it. A conventionally powered ship is too tied to a fleet train or task force to cruise independently, rendering even the largest, most potent battleship sized such commands mere destroyers escorts tied to the carrier task force. Especially with even higher demand systems like rail guns on the horizon, the gun is absolutely necessary for a peer conflict lasting one month. Um, nuclear power will necessary for any service combatant with anti-ship mission. I think nuclear power could well be the solution to many of the problems that we are going to have in the early phase of adopting Gauss guns, rail guns, and lasers. Because if you look at other issues, most of the issues around introducing these systems are power storage. Because of the amount of power they need to operate. And the only way you can really generate enough power that you don't need to have storage is nuclear power at the current time in a dense enough structure and system that you can actually make it viable for ship inclusion. And I think actually also if you have the nuclear power and the power storage then you'd have a really really capable looking vessel. Aggressive. Regarding the comment about the Iron's penchant for sea prefixes and missiles, there were land and aircraft versions of the Sea Cat missile, Tiger Cat and Hellcat, respectively. Uh, though admittedly, the Hellcat helicopter missile never found any buyers. I can't think why. Um, probably because it's named for a very pugnacious little aircraft. Peter Shepard, that concept drawing looks like stealth before stealth are cool. It does look, it does look like it's going on that way, doesn't it? That's immature. I have to be granddad to a four-year-old granddaughter. Congratulations. In answer to your question, dust off the Des Moines, Cla uh, Cro uh, Cro Des Moines cruiser plans, like you said. Maybe review them, but would be a good starting point. Ah, definitely. Ah, pull through Chicago. I recently went through the Art Institute in Chicago. I'm not going to make a joke about Paul from Chicago visiting Chicago, but it seems appropriate that if you're going to go through an art institute anyway, anywhere, it's going to be the one in Chicago. That that might be a little cruelty coming out of me, but it does, Paul. It, when your tag is Paul from Chicago, going and visiting an institute, art institute anywhere other than Chicago would just seem wrong. For some reason. I don't know why. It, it's, it's wrong for me to say these things, but it just will be. It just seems it. I have been in there many times, but this time I decided to spend the majority of my stay in the modern wing. I use the term modern loosely, as most of the modern art came from the 50s and early 60s, with some going back as early as uh, even as far as 1914. I assume these dates are not an accident. It's difficult to argue that World War I and World War II did not have an impact on art. We're all familiar with the 20s and the Elizabeth Connect, but what I didn't uh, get from the 50s until I went through was the sheer abject freaking terror that people must have felt. Images of the sun in a setting, garbage as art, splatter art, and loss of meaning. That this is what they must have been like after the Black Plague. These people legitimately thought they would make it. They would make it through the year and for good. Uh, didn't legitimately thought they wouldn't make it through the year and for good reason. Given the fact that the First World War had extensive use of chemical weapons, the second, of course, limited use of chemical and biological weapons. It obviously be the. It's, ob it's obviously the use of nuclear bomb. It is perfectly reasonable for in the fifties to anticipate that the next war will be more or less exclusively nuclear. They have not been through Korea, Vietnam, or Soviet and Afghanistan yet. The nuclear bomb is the best weapon. It would be unreasonable if they didn't try to stick it on everything. Carl Penny Packard, uh, Penny Packard. I didn't even realise Long Beach had 5 inch guns until today. They blended in so well in the superstructure, it's hard to notice them until you actively go look for them. I think it's because the uh, their Fletcher mounts are not gearing or battleship twin mounts. It would be interesting if they had twin mounts. Patrick Radcliffe, U.S. Long Beach, the last cruiser. Yeah, but no. She was the last U.S. built cruiser built cruisers. All the rest have been destroyer leaders or reiterated for the mission destroyer hulls. Uh, Radcliffe, I would say the Virginia class disagree with you. Um, no, because they're actually a continuation of destroyer leaders. It goes Lehe, Belknap, California, and Virginia, and finally Virginia. They might be called cruisers, but they're destroyer leaders in hull form characteristics. 
The problems this created were what led to the strike cruiser design, as it was found the hull design of the Virginia they were using wasn't strong enough to take the top weight, which required an internal redesign to make it strong enough, which led to a wholly new hull, and then a total new design. Cost run away, and the Aegis nuclear cruiser didn't happen. This is something I'm going to cover a lot in a nuclear cruiser video, uh, coming later in month. Basically, USN went with a destroyer-built hulk-built cruiser, designed to save money and build, uh, build time due to pressures in Congress and Pentagon, and ended up shoot, shooting themselves in the foot. They also make that also makes Long Beach, which was constructed to a cruiser build, light cruiser, but cruiser build, the last true cruiser of the United States Navy, which is why I said the last cruiser. Vision. The 5 inch 38 were likely chosen as having the guns were late decision. Um, yeah. I, I would go through your comment, Vision, but it's pretty much a repeat of what everyone else has already commented on and I've and talked about it. Uh, You've did your second comment uh, paragraph though is I think the an Aegis strike cruiser US Long Beach would have been pretty useful and I think the 1960s Blue Ridge class command ships might still be in service and even more useful ship given the aggression of the China and Russia. As for a modern replacement, a large nuclear powered Zumwalt would be a logical equipped Aegis radar suite and a dozen hypersonic missiles and a gridiron VLS, four helos and laser weapons and a lozenge. Mm, a stretch version of the DGX hull could also work as a nuclear strike cruiser. Eh, it's an interesting idea. Andrew Cox, many comments. Um, Andrew Cox, in land-based version, in real life, land-based version or, uh, of Sea Slug was the Red Heaven, or Heaven. Some uh, some uh, thing religious with H, but a bit of difference, I know. Or such, and the RN did try and change the name. Unfortunately, for future projects, no one seems to have informed the name part that a Sea Slug is actually a marine animal and, ma animal and not two words. Sea Cat, a member of the Otter family, was derived from an anti-army, anti-tank round, so probably the sea was felt necessary. Yeah. Andrew Cox, I can't decide if my favourite nuclear option is the Genie or the David Crockett. Compared to them, nukes on naval missiles are quite sensible. At least they don't have a fire uh, don't didn't do a nuclear five-inch shell. Are you sure? Andrew Cox, if the USN is sat watching the army getting news and battle honours all across Vietnam, then I'm sure they were only too keen to claim anything as naval battle to get on the scorecard. Well, then, as John Austin then points out, Navy was getting honours left and right if you consider the carry aviation component. They were... Um, ooh. Tobias Jeffrey. Oh, hey, the, the missile, oh, the missiles missed us. Boom, oh lord, we're all gone. An accurate description of the US in the 50s to 80s. Yeah. Sure, well, it was an early age that led to really decommissioning. The 1994 budget, the Cold War is over and we'll never need to fight again, gutted the service navy and all the nuclear powered service ships non carried were retired in the mid 1990s because of the cost of continuing operations and core refueling. The Californias, Virginias, the Bainbridge, and Truxton. Yep. Annoyed one. My dad served in US Long Beach before he worked on the Mark 10 Terry launcher. She could transfer her missiles from one launcher to the other. That is very useful. <sighs> She's a good ship. She was an interesting ship. And certainly a more capable one than is sometimes remembered. Certainly more capable than sometimes remembered. Anyway, thank you for watching. Thank you for all your support. I wouldn't be able to do it all without uh, do any of it without you. Without all of you, and yes, take care. Hope you enjoyed.